I just would like to open uh, syllabus. Yes, syllabus of international finance. Third unit, which is a uh, foreign exchange market, and we are today at the last point of foreign exchange market after. Uh, learning spot transactions forward transactions transaction exposure economic exposure today we will be discussing on international bond market or international debt market bond market or debt market and then in this international bond market or debt market what are the various option available like say zero coupon bond edr edr gdr i think uh, uh, we discuss in last session american deposit receipts and global deposit receipts but today again uh, we will have a quick uh, overview of edr and gdr do you remember we have discussed this edr and gdr, GDR in the last session Am I correct? Am I correct? Am I correct? Hello? Am I audible? In last session, hello? Am I audible? Hello, please, am I audible? Yes, sir. So in last session, uh, we have discussed on uh, American deposit receipts and global deposit receipts. Am I correct? Have you discussed or not? EDR and GDR? What's that? Not remembering? Okay, no issue. If now, if you are not remembering, again uh, we will have a quick review on uh, EDR and GDR. Do not worry. Uh, let me share you, share with you, the international uh, date market uh, PPT. That is global debt market or international debt market. It is one and the same thing. International bond market or global debt market. The meaning is same. Can you see my PPT? Yes, can you see my PPT? Hello? Yes, sir. Okay. International bond market. These are the types uh, which are mentioned in our syllabus. I will be discussing this one by one. Now, at the international level, foreign bond and euro bond. Euro bond, which are being uh, developed by European countries because they also de develop euro currency, euro. So, similarly, euro bond is also developed by European countries. Then, uh, global bond, straight bond, FRN, FRN stands for floating rate note, FRN stands for floating rate notes. And then convertible bonds and cocktail bonds. Convertible bonds and cocktail bond. What it is? We will uh, learn this one by one. Now, I'm going to the next slide. Now, these types uh, short term and medium term instruments. 
in regards to the short term and medium term short term it is a uh, basically for a few months and medium term about one year or uh, maximum three years that is medium term okay short term which is for few months maybe one month two months three months six months and medium term which is for, from one year to three year so euro notes euro commercial paper and medium term euro notes and other that is adr and gdr so these belongs to the short and medium term the earlier these are all instruments these are the long term okay these listed uh, bonds are uh, long term and these are short term and medium term instruments may i go to next slide can i go to next slide yes please shall i shall i take you to the next slide Shall I take you to the next slide? Am I audible? Hello, can you see my PPT? Hello, yes. Do you want to say something? I'm not uh, hearing properly. Yes. Yes, uh, repeat please. Okay, my sound is uh, breaking, is it? Yes, sir. A bit low. Now? It's, it's like the same. Can you see my PPT? Yes, sir, we can. We can. Okay. So, uh, these are the instruments which belongs to the short and medium term instruments and uh, uh, this is long term instruments okay this is long term and these are the short and medium term may i go to the next slide now which slide was over Yes, please. Okay. Now, foreign bond and euro bond. Now, what it is? What is the difference between this? Actually, these uh, both are international bond. Okay, foreign and euro both are international bond. Only thing, their currency is different. Foreign bonds, which are uh, in terms of dollar, and euro bonds. Are in euro currency. Euro currency. Now foreign bonds are underwritten by the underwriter of the country where they are issued. It means, suppose if foreign bond, if it is from say uh, Australia, so Australia uh, will underwrite this because they are issuing. And uh, as far as maturity concern because uh, once you put investment in foreign bond so there is a particular maturity maybe say for two years or two and a half years three years whatever it is so maturity based on the need of investor of particular country 
So this is the beauty of this foreign bond maturity based on the need of investor of particular country. Now suppose if investor, if he is from say Australia and he is putting his investment in America, so Australian person putting investment in uh, American company. Now if Australian uh, investor, if he is interested only for two years, so maturity will be based because he, it, it is his wish two years. So the maturity will be for two years. Vice versa, suppose uh, there is a country, say uh, England. Uh, England uh, investor is investing in America and he is interested for three years. Okay. So for uh, England uh, investor, the maturity will be for three years. So maturity based on the need of investors of a particular country. Foreign bonds are subjected to government regulations in the country where they are issued, of course. Now, this is one of the very important clause. Whatever foreign bonds issued by that foreign company, they will be observing the rules and regulation of their country and not the investor country. Now, suppose if foreign bonds are issued by American company, so, company will observe American rule and not Indian rule or uh, say Bangladesh rule because company belongs to America. So, they will follow American rule. Are you clear? Someone like Got this point about uh, regulation? Regulations. will be country where they are issued. If they are issued from Australia, then Australian regulation will be applied. Got this point? Hello? Did you understand this point? Third point? Yes, sir. Now, uh, we will see the difference between foreign bond and euro bond. Uh, look at this slide. Differences or differentiate between foreign bond and euro bond. Now foreign bond. If an Indian company issue bond in the New York and bond is dominated in US dollar, such bonds are called foreign bonds. So the Indian company is having uh, issue in New York and the bond is dominated in US dollar. So that bond is called as a foreign bond. Now suppose the Indian company say Tata Motors, Tata Motor. Now Tata Motor, if they are issue their bond in New York, so naturally it will be in a US dollar. So in US, it will be called as a foreign bond. Now look at this Euro bond, but in case of Euro bonds, they are dominated in currency other than the currency of the country where, where the bonds are issued. Try to understand this different. See, Indian again I repeat, Indian company issue bond in New York and bond is dominated in US dollar. That is why it is foreign bond. But in case of Euro bond, they are dominated in currency other than the currency of the country where the bonds are issued. Now suppose if bonds are issued in uh, say uh, New York, and if company belongs to say Japan, so their bond will be in N, even if they are issued in America, but it will be issued in N because it is a Japanese company. Even if they are issued in Germany, still the currency will be N because it is a Japanese company where the bonds are issued. Bonds are issued from Japan. So Japanese currency will be recognized. Second difference, under foreign bond, foreign bonds underwritten by the underwriter of the country where they issue. Foreign bonds underwritten by the underwriters of the country where they are issued. Now here, if it is a Tata Motor company, Tata Motor belongs to India, okay? So it will be underwritten by India because 
it has been issued from india tata motor it is indian company in case of euro bond euro bonds under written by the underwriters of a multinationality as i told you so now japanese company is selling their bond in uh, america they are selling into uh, germany so in case of euro bond since it is uh, multinationality euro bonds under written by the underwriters of multinational multinational continue this foreign bonds subjected to government rules and regulation in case of euro bonds uh, they are free from rules and regulation one second please yes uh, let's continue our session foreign bond uh, it is it follows the governmental rules and regulation euro bond there are no rules and regulation they are free from uh, rules and regulation so this is a very unique feature which euro bond has they are away from all rules and regulation only company rules and regulation are applicable not country rules and regulation am i audible hello am i audible yes please am i audible okay and then uh, the next difference foreign bonds is determined by determine keeping in mind the investor of a particular country so here investor is being focused more euro bond are tailor to the needs of multinational investors so here as euro bonds it is being sold at a multinational so they do not consider a particular country whereas in foreign bond they consider particular country this is the only difference in multinational uh, there is no as such consideration of particular country so the rule is applicable to all uh, citizen whereas in a foreign bond it is for particular country so this is the difference between foreign bond and euro bond uh, may i go to the next slide now after uh, knowing the difference between foreign bond and euro bond may i go to the next slide hello hello now global bond foreign bond we discuss euro bond now this global bond now basically this global bond these are issued by world bank since it is global bond so first it issued in 1989 by world bank so world bank was the first bank who had issued this global bond in the year 1989 then it also issued by company not only world bank but uh, starting was done by world bank beginning was done by world bank but later on 
these global bonds were also issued by companies, different companies. Global bonds, it dominated in seven countries' currency. So, different seven countries' currency, maybe euro, yen, uh, dollar, pound, Canadian dollar, Australian dollar. So, different seven countries' currency. As I mentioned here, the Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, Japanese yen, Swedish krona, euro. These are, I have listed some currencies. Then global bond, next feature, bonds that can be offered within the euro mar market and several other markets simultaneously. But basically global bonds are uh, within euro market and several other markets simultaneously. Even in uh, uh, America also, it is being issued. Now, unlike euro bond, global bond can be issued in the same currency as the currency of issuance. Now, for example, a global bond could be both issued in United States and denominated in US dollar. So, United States, national United States uh, currency is uh, uh, dollar. So, it will be denominated in dollar. So, these are some features of a global bond. Now, next one is uh, before we go to the next slide. If you have any doubt, please ask. Otherwise, we'll move to the next slide. Any doubt? No, sir. No, sir. No. Features of Euro bond. After global bond, Euro bond. Under return by internationally. Of course, it is uh, Euro bond, so it is internationally under return. Offered simultaneously to investor in number of countries, maybe 100 nations or 200 nations, simultaneously it can be issued, simultaneously. At a one time it, it is issued all over the world. Issued outside the judiciary of any single entry. Uh, judiciary means out of their uh, area, that is known as judiciary. So issued outside the judiciary of any single country. Euro bonds are not registered through regulatory agency. These Euro bonds are not registered through regulatory agencies. Make coupon payments annually. So the payment, it is being done on an annual basis in case of Euro bond. Euro bond generally, it is in large in size. It is not in a smaller amount. So if you if you would like to uh, buy euro bond, you will have to make provision uh, of huge amount. So large in size offered for simultaneous placement in, in different countries. So basically, uh, it requires a, a heavy amount, hefty amount, a huge amount. Now, next one is straight bond. What is this straight bond? Let us understand. Now, in straight bond, interest rate is fixed, known as coupon rate. It is known as coupon rate. Whatever uh, return investor is getting, that return is fixed. His income is fixed. That is known as interest rate. It is a traditional type of bond. Now, its types are, its varieties are, these are the types, different types uh, are there. Bullet redemption bond. Redemption means after two, three years, uh, investor get, get it back. That is now known as bullet redemption. At a one scope, it is being uh, returned. Bullet redemption bond. Then rising coupon bond. Uh, as the days passes, the uh, return amount also gets increased. Rising coupon bond. Then zero coupon bond. Currency options. Full and beer bonds. Debt warrant bonds. These are the different names according to their uh, varieties, according to their types. Remember, in case of state bond, interest rate is fixed and it is a traditional type of bond. These two uh, uh, keywords do remember, fixed rate and traditional type. And then uh, types you can mention. 
So this was about uh, straight bond. As I told you, uh, very beginning of the lecture, that today we will be discussing uh, different kind of uh, global debt instruments, global bond market wide discussing. So can I go to the next slide now? As I mentioned, today we are at the end of third unit, and I, I'm sure that today we'll complete third unit. May I go to the next slide? Yes, sir. Now, this is known as FRM, floating rate notes. Now, let us understand the characteristics of FRM, that is floating rate notes. Floating rate, rate note does not carry fixed rate of interest, whereas in earlier, that is straight bond, carries fixed rate of return. Fixed, there is a fixed uh, rate of interest, whereas in floating rate note, does not carry floating rate of interest. That is why the name is floating. Uh, floating means what? It flows according to the situation, according to the uh, condition, floating. Uh, are you getting my meaning? Floating means which float as per the situation, as per the uh, condition. That is why the name itself, floating. Are you receiving my explanation? Understanding my explanation? Hello? Hello? So does not carry fixed rate of interest. Second, interest quoted as a premium or discount. Now, what is this premium or discount? Now, suppose, uh, just for a, a understanding purpose, take example, suppose, if FRN rate is say 100, huh? original rate is 100, but it is not being issued at 100. It will be issued at 125, but the printing uh, printed price will be 100. But how much you are paying? Can you answer me? Original floating rate note rate is 100, but company is issuing at 125. But the certificate that FRN note which you are receiving, it will be of 100. But how much you have paid? Can you answer me? How much amount you have paid? Hello? Hello? Uh, how much you are paying? Can you answer me? Are you following my example? Or shall I repeat again? Or shall I repeat? Yes, sir. Okay, now listen carefully. Suppose if FRN price is 100 rupees, I'm just understanding purpose, FRN price is 100, but company is issuing at a premium rate that is 125, 125. What is the price of FRN? Hundred, but you are paying how much? One twenty-five. One twenty-five. So hundred is the price you are paying. One hundred twenty-five. What is the difference? Twenty-five. So twenty-five. It is known as premium because of company's brand. Uh, you are paying twenty-five rupees extra or twenty-five dollar extra, whatever it is, whatever currency is there. So you are paying extra amount than the price because of the company brand. So that is known as premium, premium. Why is versa discount? If company is not uh, having a, that particular brand or it is not very popular in the market. So that company, what they will do, the price of uh, FRN is 100, but they are selling their FRN to the investor at 80 rupees, 80 whatever dollar. Original price is 100, but they are issuing at 80. So what is the difference here? What is the difference? 20 is the difference, okay? So 
uh, here investor is paying less so that is called as a discount when investor pay more than the price quoted it is called as a premium when investor pay less than the price quoted it is called discount so this was about premium and discount sometimes there is a premium sometimes there is a discount third one is interest rate revised periodically so this is the uh, specialty of F frn every after a six months or one year interest rates are revised periodically uh, they will def define the period either six months or quarter or maybe one year but uh, rates are uh, revised now these are the types of floating rate perpetual drop lock frn flip flop frn mismatch frn hybrid fixed rate uh, reverse frn these are the different types of frn so this was about uh, floating rate notes if you want to ask anything from this slide uh, please ask me yes second one is the libor 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 it is the uh, stand for london inter bank offer rate so this is the rate which is uh, presented by in a london market that is known as a libor london inter bank offer rate uh, they uh, consider this as a reference rate as a reference rate Okay, sir. Any doubt? No, sir. So I am taking you to the next slide. Convertible bonds. Convertible bonds means bonds can be converted into the equity share. Convertible. You are allowed to convert that bond into equity shares. That is known as convertible bonds. Convertible bonds into equity shares. Sometimes there are there is also non-convertible bonds. Means the bond remains bond only. that we you cannot convert into the equity that is known as non convertible now some convertible bonds have detachable warrants involving acquisition right rights so these are the rights which are offered to the investor det detachable warrants involving acquisition rights automatic convertibility into a specified number specified number of shares automatic convertibility into a specified number of shares so there is a automatic convertible uh, procedure uh, is being followed you do not have to ask to the company it it goes automatically so automatic convertibility into specified number of shares and if you do not want this option then it will be remain as a bond only Uh, please uh, try to uh, understand this these are some uh, just uh, new new features which are given by uh, companies some uh, innovative features and uh, in market even some uh, most of the new things are coming into the international market and uh, they are uh, issuing their bonds accordingly now the next one is cocktail bond now this is cocktail is it is a mixture it is a mix now let us understand what is cocktail bond denominated in a mixture of currencies so there will be maybe two or three currencies in one bond two or three currencies so uh, there might be a dollar then a australian dollar and canadian dollar so three different dollars are involved us dollar canadian dollar and australian dollar that is a cocktail bond so this is the meaning of this first line followed understood understood yes sir denominated in mixture of currencies three different or four uh, different currencies are involved in one bond then it represents a weighted average of five currencies now since it is a cocktail so how to get the value of that because every currency has a different value am i correct every currency has different value dollar is dollar rate is different in relation to the rupiah 
and then Canadian uh, dollar rate is different in, uh, in relation with the rupiah. Am I correct? Every currency has different value, no? It has same value. Every currency has same value or different value? What is your guess? Every currency has different value or same value at international level? Can you answer me? Hello? Am I audible? Every currency yes, has sir. every currency has same value or different value. Answer me. Yen, pound, dollar are having same value. If you compare with uh, rupiah, different value. Now that is why if there is a different value, then they take an average, weighted average of these uh, different currencies. Suppose if there are five currencies, so they will take an average of all five currencies and one rate will be de decided. One rate will be there. Or not? Understood? Or not the second line, weighted average? Third, that is investor get currency diversification risk. Since it is a diver, a different currencies, so there is a diversification of risk. Uh, risk. So this is the benefit which is given to the investor. Now, how suppose if Canadian dollar, if it is uh, uh, going at a lower side, uh, maybe uh, American dollar uh, going for upward size, higher side. So. American dollar is uh, compensating Canadian, do Canadian dollar because Canadian is going lower side. So this kind of compensation is uh, there. We can compensate from other currency. So currency diversification risk is there. So investor gets benefit of this cocktail bond. So it is always beneficial to the investor since there are different currencies and not. So if one currency is going down, other currencies are covering that loss. Followed? Am I audible? Can you listen me? Can you hear me? Hello? Can you listen me? Hello? Can you hear me? Am I audible? Yes, sir. So, uh, any doubt in regards to the cocktail bond? Cocktail? Uh, I, I discussed the uh, four features of cocktail bond. Any difficulty in understanding in uh, any uh, characteristics out of these four? Any difficulty in understanding? Okay. Now, after cocktail bond, euro notes. Now, what it is? Euro notes. Like <clears throat> uh, PN. PN stands for promissory note. Like promissory notes for obtaining short term funds because the uh, there are uh, two types of funds uh, which company looks for. One is the short term and the other one is long term funds. So like PN, uh, which is promissory notes for short term notes. Similarly, Euro notes are also there, uh, which caters the short term requirements. Euro notes, uh, basic, uh, their uh, purpose or objective is to cater 
short term requirement it is denominated in any currency other than the currency of the country where they are issued documentation facilities are minimum so uh, documentation is uh, very minimum so the customer uh, investor need not to bother about or need not to preserve uh, several documents then represents low cost funding route so company who are going for euro notes as such the cost of euro notes is minimum a company do not have to spend a uh, huge amount on issuing of euro notes so minimum cost is there so this is uh, this is the benefit which is uh, given to the company then investor to prefer them in view of short maturity so maybe for a, a one month or two months a investor can go for euro notes and there are euro notes available for one month also suppose if today you are putting euro notes uh, next uh, after 30 days your money will be returned back so short maturity is there and that is why euro notes are also uh, popular at a international level now before i go to the next slide if any doubt please ask otherwise we will move to the next slide here we discuss that uh, there is a minimum less documentation less papers are required then uh, this euro notes for a short term uh, requirement and uh, company do not have to spend much on this euro note so both are benefited company as well as investor it is beneficial for both followed followed yes sir okay now the next one is euro commercial notes this is also a short term but it is a debt instrument debt instruments means it is as good as uh, investor is giving loan to the company that is why it is a debt instrument so company considers as a debt as a loan uh, this particular in instruments so corporations issue euro commercial papers euro commercial papers in order to tap into the international money market for their financing now company who are who wants money for short term who wants money for their uh, short period maybe for 3 months 6 months so such company they go for euro commercial notes now understand this an example of euro commercial uh, paper is uh, british firm issuing debt instrument in us dollar so british company is issuing in us dollar to encourage investment from dollar investment in international money market so they are encouraging to the dollar investors because in uh, british uh, which is the currency of british british company what is their currency british firm currency is what britain britain country is britain which is their currency hello yes sir yeah britain currency uh, which is the currency of britain what is the currency of britain no idea what is the currency of britain currency name currency name i am asking currency name of britain can you answer me britain currency is 
pound pound it is in pound okay britain currency is which is the britain currency pound but here in example this british company british firm issuing debt in us dollar to encourage investment from dollar in uh, investor in international money market but they are issuing in a us dollar just to encourage dollar investors and then they convert into the pound then yeah, this british company will convert into the pound and then they will utilize that money so this is a sort of uh, encouragement so this was about euro commercial notes now medium term euro notes now what it is now here longer be maturity period between 1 year to 5 year that is why it is known as a medium term so uh, period is 1 to 5 year short term euro notes are allowed to roll over then after 5 years you can roll over you can continue another for 2 uh, years or maybe for 1 year so that is known as a roll over if you do not want you can withdraw your investment you can withdraw and if you want to continue then again you can put maybe for 1 year or 2 year maybe for 5 years so roll it is known as a roll over all right understood hello am i audible understood third one is euro notes issued to get medium term funds in foreign currency without any need for redemption and fresh issue and then it is not underwritten at there is a provision for underwriting and it carries fixed interest rate every medium term uh, euro notes they carry fixed interest rate so investor right from the day one they know how much uh, return uh, they will get what means uh, what is the benefit they will be receiving so they do not to worry about this so interest rate is fixed so from the day one you know that how much amount you will receive now this is about adr represents ownership in the shares of non us company that trades in us financial market the last time we learned about adr american deposit receipt it pays dividend in us dollar whatever dividend dividend is nothing but the benefit given to the investor benefit is given in the us dollar and can be traded like the shares in uh, us based companies now these are some uh, company name i have mentioned jp morgan city bank dutch bank then uh, bank of new york mellon so these are some bank bank of new york mellon dutch bank city bank they have issued adr then uh, gdr gdr which is which stand for global depository receipts certificate issued by international bank which can be subject to worldwide circulation on capital market worldwide circulation on capital market gdrs are emitted by banks which purchase which purchase which purchase share of foreign companies and deposit it on the account gdr facilitates trade of shares especially those from emerging markets now there are emerging markets uh, many countries they want to take a benefit of other country so two countries they tie up with each other that is known as emerging market emerging market prices of gdr are often close to values of related shares so this was about gdr now let us uh, discuss about the procedure of issue how these gdrs are issued issued so deciding the size of issue size of issue and the market of issue price of issue and the format is involved so everything they decide what is the size of issue market then price these formalities are involved now there is a lead manager who take care of this uh, adr and gdr there is a lead manager he is known as a lead manager 
he is being given uh, all uh, rights to exercise this ADR and GDR. Then fulfilling the formalities and preparing the prospectus. So they design a prospectus where all information is being mentioned. That is known as prospectus, uh, which we call as a uh, information document. Information document. Then custodian asks depository located in foreign bank. Custodian and depository. They, they are two different uh, participants, custodian and depository. Proceeds flow from depository to custodian bank. Uh, I will show you the uh, graph so that it will be easy for you to understand. Uh, maybe in uh, here. Now, what are the documents required for this EDR and GDR? Now, from company side, prospectus, that is information brochure, you will have to prepare. Then uh, there is an agreement. That agreement uh, will have to be uh, provided to the investor. So that investor will come to know the risk uh, factor and then how they will be benefited. Uh, the scheme of uh, EDR and GDR, everything is mentioned in this agreement. The agreement between the custodian and the depository. And then there is an underwriting agreement also. Underwriting means, suppose if uh, EDR and GDR, if there is a poor response, so the custodian company will have to pay the difference amount, vice versa. If, uh, if it is a branded company, naturally people will give response to them. Then in that case, custodian company will not have to pay anything. So they will be enjoyed the commission. So this way, they manage the risk because it is a risk. Suppose if there is a poor response, then uh, what to do? So then in that case, custodian bank will compensate that amount if there is a poor response. And if there is a good response, then uh, everything will be uh, fine. Then uh, custodian bank will not have to pay anything. In fact, they will get commission for this uh, ar arrangement, for this uh, risk ar ar arrangement. Then a copy of the agreement with the listing stock, stock operation. So basically there are only two documents a document required. One is the prospectus and the another is agreement. Uh, remember these two points, prospectus and agreement. These documents, they need to prepare. So this was about the EDR and GDR. And uh, this way, today we have completed unit number three, unit three, and uh, next uh, unit four, that is about taxes. Uh, it will be about taxes and uh, other things. We will continue in the next session. So before we close today's session, if you have any doubt, please ask, otherwise we will end the session. Any doubt? Any question, please? Any question? So our unit three is uh, completed. We are done with the unit three. Thank you all for attending session. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.